All right, welcome back guys. Today, as you guys can tell, we've got some low snow conditions. So today I'm gonna give you my five best techniques or tips to riding in low snow. Let's get into it. All right. nextlevelshop.com TM ting with a little orbits thing no all right guys so we're 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 near christmas but we're just having a, a lazy start to our season we're in some really low snow conditions but we're still having a blast and i'd say that you can go out and still have a ton of fun but today it was necessary to talk about the tips that can keep me safe, still having fun, but just keys to riding in this low snow condition. Number one would be your mindset, like having a realistic expectation of what you're getting yourself into. Time and time again, these sleds have, I just kicked over 15 miles. And so there's a lot of us that are getting out saying that we're gonna just stick to the trail and just go put some break in miles on sleds. And I'd say that there's a lot of you that are doing that. I get a bit greedy, I get out here, I see some terrain like this. We're not in a ton of snow, but we can still come out here and put miles on sleds, but get off trail and just be realistic about what it is that's in front of me. Remember that digging a ski in or riding heavy on that front end, those things are probably gonna bite you. So mindset being number one. Number two, you need to learn to ride light. And while I'm talking about it, we'll show some examples of going across, if you are side hilling, just remembering to be a bit further back on the running board, really using that throttle to keep that front end up. So us guys riding chaoses, where we really like that lightweight front end feel, this is gonna come in handy when you're trying to navigate across stuff where you can see like what's right out in front of me right here, We've got some areas that you can tell in low snow conditions, no base. If it's a lump, it's a stump, or it's a rock, or it's a twig, or it's something. So remembering to ride light. Okay, number three, tips and riding in low snow. As you guys can tell, and it's nothing special, right? But coming up over a log, I can easily tell that being on the balls of my feet, being a bit back on the running board, but really just being cat-like ready, maybe more, more ready than you are when you have those deep snow conditions where you know you've got a base under you, you know that even though it's a log that you're getting ready to go over, chances are there's some set up snow over top of the log versus just the log. And these conditions, it's the log. It's liable to be slippery. If I'm in a side hill position and as I go over it, it's gonna be about carrying that momentum and getting up over it, but being on the balls of your feet. So along with balls of your feet for number three, it's gonna share an upper body tip. And that's just, and you guys could probably tell, more than ever in this low snowpack condition, my upper body is, is ready for battle. Meaning that when we get into POW, and we all know what that experience, well, I think most of us do, when you can just kind of relax your upper body, it really is about giving it gas, setting your sled in the right position, but we don't have to be ready for maybe the, you know, what's under the snow that's sitting there lurking that we can't visibly see, but it might bite us in the ski, the track, something like that. So upper body position, you guys have watched me ride on the channel a bunch. I'm very like elbows up, very, very for, you know, prepared for sort of that worst case scenario in low snow. I am always, I mean always, anticipating changes under the snow, and I really need my upper body to be very anticipated, right? We could also call it reactive, right? But you guys remember that I would way, way rather us be a anticipated rider versus being reactive to the situation because I was kind of blind to it. So keeping that upper body nice and strong. Remember from years ago, guys, the box position from my handlebars in my chest in this area here, if I take something to the chest and I'm pretty sort of gumbied or noodled armed up here, that's really gonna have a drastic effect on me. I could come into the handlebars, I could get pulled away from it. So 
having that ability to have that really strong upper body that will share number three along with being on the balls of our feet. Okay guys, so number four, we decided to just use a hillside here where I think another great tip to riding in low snow is because I'm not really on any kind of a base, anytime I approach a hill, and we've done videos like this before where we talk about momentum, the other part of momentum, especially in early or low snow conditions, is gonna to be to really anticipate, be that anticipated rider. So looking way, way ahead, planning out that route, but then let's build some momentum right down here on the flats so that we can carry that momentum on the hill. And then knowing I'm in low snow, as you guys can see from the landscape here, I'm in a bit of a minefield. I certainly don't wanna be waiting to give my sled throttle once I'm on the hill. I wanna build that momentum from here and carry that momentum up on the hill. Here we go. So looking ahead, planning out the route, kind of looking at where, where I think I can go without too much damage. And I'm gonna keep those skis nice and light. All right. So again, guys, number four, really plan ahead, really anticipating what that line decision looks like, and then obviously just carrying that momentum. So coming up on the hill, reward yourself, right? Set yourself up for all kinds of success by building that momentum down there. And then obviously you're keeping that momentum as you come, on the, come up on the hill. I can tell, and in a lot of spots there, I'm on the ground. Like I can feel the rock. You guys can see a lot of this debris I'm not in good snow just yet, so I don't have sort of that ability to slack off and kind of wait and give it momentum later. So lots of momentum on the bottom, anticipate, find that line, and hopefully that helps you in a low snow condition. Number five, guys, and kind of my last little tip to riding in low snow condition is the term deflection, right? The idea that I'm riding, I've made a plan, and something under the snow bumped the sled, kind of took me off guard, of which all the tips that we just talked about, having that strong upper body, anticipating what's in front of me, having a bit of momentum, balls of my feet, and overall just sort of understanding that I am in thin snow, when I do get deflected, my course changes. And we could also refer this to, you know, initiating plan B, something like that. But that deflection and that changing our line, remember once again, instead of just being laser focused of what's 10 feet in front of the sled, eyes up and eyes wide open, looking for all kinds of alternative routes because there's things that are under the snow. It could even be just frozen ground. And I'm slipping and sliding. The front end is changing direction, either up or down. I'm gonna move my feet. I'm gonna give it gas, give it brake if necessary. But as that deflection happens, having that other plan so that I can still enjoy it, still not get stuck and keep going. So hopefully those five, and we can kind of break them back down again, right? We talked about being realistic and setting realistic expectations to the snowpack that we're in. And something else to touch on as we close would just be remembering, you guys can kind of tell I'm breathing. I would say that as much as I try and prepare physically for this sport, there's, there are things about snowmobiling that, and you guys have heard it and you're probably saying it to yourself, that the only way that I really get prepared for riding is riding. There's some truth to that. You are coming out, you're kind of getting the cobwebs dusted off. You're potentially on a new machine. Um, you, you know, your body's not fully acclimated or fully adjusted to riding. So be realistic to that. Maybe uh, don't go as hard, right? We're not gonna, I don't think snowmobiling becomes this thing where, you know, you pick up where you left off from how many months ago. I think you come out, you know, you look at the snow that's in front of you. Heck, when it's deep and you can kind of get a bit more relaxed, I'd say go for it, that's awesome. But when it's low snow, you know you're gonna be hitting stuff under the snowpack. Just be realistic to the day. Maybe not go as many hours. We're not out here to break any records. It's not a race. So let's remember that we're gonna have those realistic expectations. We're gonna to try to ride light on our feet, right? 
We're gonna try to ride on the balls of our feet so that we can make those quick move movements on the running board, side to side, front to back, something like that. Then it's being an anticipated rider, holding your momentum, and then having that plan B option if that sled does get deflected. So hopefully those five tips really help you guys. I know as I've been out riding today, what is this number, day number three, including my trip up into Alaska, um, but day number three for me on the snow, I'm, I'm in my helmet kind of laughing at myself of still just kind of rusty, right? Kind of not picking up where I left off. I prepared all dang summer, guys. I, I take my fitness very, very seriously, and I'm still out here sweating, huffing and puffing, things like that. But I'm trying my hardest to put together some more videos as kind of our first on snow of the season. Really love what you guys do in terms of the content and the feedback you give the channel. You guys remember the drill, so we'll see you next time.